fractions. I don't understand these fractions. I wish somebody could help me. Hey, Melody, you're so lucky. You don't have to study or do homework. I wish you could help me with my mathematics homework, then I could finish it quickly and go play with my friends. Don't waste it. Good. You must remember, Nick. There is a time for play and there is a time for study. And this is the time for play! No, no. I mean study. Just joking. So, what do you want to learn today? I don't understand even problem fractions and mixed numbers. No problem. But first, let's do a quick revision on what fractions are. Yes! A fraction is a part of a whole object. That means if we have one sandwich and we cut it into two equal parts, then one of the parts is a fraction of the whole sandwich. And if I cut a cake into four equal parts, again, one piece could be a fraction of the whole cake. Let's look at the sandwich again. Since there are two equal parts, then one part is also called one over two. And it is written like this. And if I cut the cake into four and remove one part, then it would be one over four or one quarter. Very good. And if we continued naming the other parts, we would have two quarters, three quarters, and four quarters. And four quarters make? And four quarters make a whole. Yes, just one other thing. If we look at the fraction, for example, 1 over 2, do you know the number on top and the number at the bottom each have a name? Yes, the top is called the numerator. Right, and the bottom number? Wait, wait, I know this. Shall I get you some help? No, no, it's called the denominator. Right again. A fraction is a part of a whole object. That means, if we divide an object into two equal parts, for example, one of the parts is a fraction of the whole object. Each part is called a half. If an object is divided into four parts, then the parts are called one quarter, two quarters, three quarters, and 
four quarters, which make up a whole. Also, if you remember, in a fraction, the top number is called the numerator, and the bottom number is called the denominator. Now that you remember what fractions are, Nick, it's time for us to look at your problem. I have two questions. I'll start with the first. What are improper fractions? Improper fractions are fractions where there are more parts than there are in the whole. Huh? Let's take an example of the sandwich again. This time, we have a real sandwich. Hey, Melody, you know magic. Actually, everybody here knows magic. That's so cool. Will you teach me some tricks? Maybe later. Now, back to our sandwich. If I cut this sandwich into four equal pieces... Four quarters. Very good, assistant. Now, if we had another sandwich. And I cut this also into four quarters. One of these quarters and put them together with the first four. What do we get? Nick, you count the pieces. One quarter. Two quarters. Three quarters. Four quarters. And five quarters. So, if we write it as a fraction, it will be 5 over 4. Correct? Do you see something strange about this fraction? Yes, the numerator 5 is larger than the denominator 4. Very good, Nick. So, this is an improper fraction. Spot on, my friend. So, every time the numerator is larger than the denominator, it is an improper fraction. Now, let's look at two more examples. 5 over 3 or 5 thirds is an improper fraction. So, is 7 over 4 or 7 quarters. Do you like quizzes, Nick? I hate quizzes because my sister always beats me. Not to worry, I'm sure you get the answers to this quiz. Look at these five fractions. Tell me which are improper fractions. A. 2 over 5 B. 5 over 4 C. 7 over 3 D. 2 over 7 and E. 9 8 I pick B because the numerator 5 is larger than the denominator 4. Also C, 7 over 3 and E, 9, 8. Very good. 5 over 4, 7 over 3 and 9 over 8. Just now, Nick learned about improper fractions. What are improper fractions? Improper fractions are fractions where the numerator is larger than the denominator. The following are improper fractions. 4 over 3 or 4 thirds. 13 over 5 or 13 fifths, 
five over two or five halves. Nick, since you have been such a good pupil, I would like to give you this little present. Huh? Huh? Wow! Melody, thank you very much! Now, let's move on to your second question. What are mixed numbers? A mixed number is a number that consists of a whole number and a fraction. Let's use some oranges to show what I mean. Nick, could you cut these two oranges? One into halves and the other into quarters. Okay! Now, a full orange like this is called a whole, right? Yes. I take two whole oranges and put them together with half an orange. So, I have two whole numbers and a half. That's whole numbers combined with a fraction, making it a mixed number. Correct! Now, let's see this mixed number. This is two and a half. So simple. Nick, why don't you show me an example of a mixed number? Okay, I'll take one whole orange and three quarters. And when I put them together, I get one and three quarters. And this is what one and three quarters should look like. Got it? Yes! Mixed numbers. A mixed number is a number that consists of a whole number and a fraction. Look at these examples and see if you can name the mixed numbers. We have one, two, three apples. And the fraction is 1, 2, 3, and 4 out of 5. So that's 4 fifths. When we put this together, we get 3 and 4 fifths. In this mixed number, we have 1 two oranges. The fraction is one of eight. So that is one eighth. When we join them, the mixed number will be two and one eighth. Melody? Why does my teacher want us to learn improper fractions and mixed numbers together? That's because they're related. Like brothers and sisters or cousins? No, no, not quite. Let me explain. An improper fraction can actually be changed into a mixed number. Oh! And in reverse, a mixed number can actually be changed into an improper fraction. Let me show you. Give me an improper fraction. Okay. 5 over 3 of 5 thirds. Let me do a bit of magic. Can I try? Can I try? You? Yes. Of course. Put out your hand. Your index finger? I'm going to hold your hand. And as I move it, I want you to just spin your finger. Okay. Here goes. Yes! Let's divide 5 by 3. When we divide, we get 1 on top. Multiply that by 3, we should get a 3 at the bottom. Then, 5 minus 3 equals 2. So, 
we take the one as the whole number. Then we put the remainder two over three, and we get one and two over three. Ah, I got it this time. Let's try another one. I'll do it this time. Melody, you pick an improper fraction. Okay. Fourteen fifths. Now I divide fourteen by five. That would be two on top. Multiply that by five. Will give me ten below. So fourteen minus ten equals four. The whole number will be two, and my fraction will be four over five. When I add them together, I get a mixed number. That is two and four fifths. Very good, Nick. Now let's do the reverse. Change a mixed number into an improper fraction. I suggest four and one sixth. All we need to do is multiply the denominator and the whole number, and add the answer to the numerator. So for four and one sixth, we multiply six and four. We get twenty-four. Then we add twenty-four to one. We get twenty-five over six. Correct. To change an improper fraction into a mixed number, we divide the numerator by the denominator. We put the remainder over the denominator, and we add it to the whole number, and the answer will be a mixed number. In the example just now, Nick suggested five over three, or five thirds. When we divide five by three, we put one on top, multiply the one by three. We should get a three at the bottom. Then, five minus three equals two. When we put the remainder two over the denominator three and add it to the whole number, which is one, we get one and two thirds. Now, let's change a mixed number. Into an improper fraction. We first multiply the denominator to the whole number and add the answer to the numerator. We'll take four and one sixth as an example. We multiply six to the four. We get twenty-four. Then we add. Twenty-four to one, and we get twenty-five over six. Well, Nick, looks like you have learned enough on improper fractions and mixed numbers for one day. Thanks, Melody. Wouldn't be able to do it without your help. Now I understand improper fractions and mixed numbers. Good. Now you should be able to do your homework. I suppose I have to go home now. Yes, but any time you have a question on mathematics, just call me. I sure will. Bye, Melody. Goodbye. Here, my mother's recipe for fruit punch. It contains improper fractions and mixed numbers. Susie, Alvin, I would like both of you to help me make the punch. I hope I can remember mixed numbers and improper fractions. Don't worry, Alvin. Nick and I will help you. Now let's begin by looking at all the ingredients. What are ingredients? Oh. Those are the things that we will put in the punch. Thank you, Susie, for explaining that. No problem. Three and a half or 
oranges, two and three quarters of apples, five halves of lime, six quarters of pineapple, two and a half tablespoons of sugar. Since my mother's already cut the fruits into halves and quarters, it'll be easier for us to count. Now I am picking three and a half oranges. One, two, three, and a half. These are two and three quarters of apples. One, two, one quarter, two quarters, and three quarters. I am picking five halves of lime. One, two, three, four, five. Very good. Very, very, very good. Now I'm picking six quarters of pineapple. One, two, three, four, Five, six. Okay, so now I'm taking two and a half tablespoons of sugar. One, two, and a half. Now are we ready to make a punch? Yes, we are. Hey, this fruit punch is really tasty. Mmm. Yeah, there's your mom's recipe, Nick. I hope we don't finish all the punch before the party. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody want more? Me, me, me.